Hello and welcome back to uh, to season two of uh, of Norton live streams. I hope you've had a nice uh, summer break. I certainly have. Uh, uh, before we start uh, on a personal note, I'd just like to recognise this very sad time, uh, the passing of our Queen, uh, and to pay tribute to her long and dedicated service to our country and our condolences to uh, to her family at this extremely difficult time. Thank you. Okay, so um, as you know, Norton live streams are a part of a series of live streams we've been doing over the past uh, past couple of years. Uh, we were doing this season uh, up until the end of the year. If you've missed any of the previous live streams, you can catch them on our on our YouTube channel. So don't uh, hesitate to go and have a look at all the live streams we've done in the past. Um, this is a Microsoft Teams platform we're using uh, today for the live stream. So for, for those of you in there who are not uh, speaking the English language so well, there are some uh, other language options in our closed uh, captions section of, uh, of Microsoft Teams. Here are the instructions on, stream, uh, on the stream, how to activate uh, your subtitle. So click on the icon and choose the language uh, that you uh, require to understand me, uh, me a, little, uh, a little better. Okay, so um, the first live stream of season two, to kick things off, we're going to be making things uh, nice and shiny. We're going to be doing uh, composite uh, panel uh, sanding uh, today or this morning. So for the next half an hour, that's what we're going to be uh, to be uh, uh, concentrating on. So let's have a quick look at the agenda we've got for the next uh, next half an hour. Thank you, Martin. If you put the slide up, it would be marvellous. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, so today's agenda, like I say, we're looking at composite or glass reinforced plastic in particular, uh, panel sanding and polishing. First of all, we're gonna introduce you to, to me, who I am and, and my colleague uh, who's gonna be presenting with you, the product manager who's, uh, whose responsibility these products are. Uh, we're gonna have a quick look at the composite market to see uh, why this is a, a, an important market to us. Uh, what is a composite as well? So uh, we'll get, take you into exactly what's, uh, how these are made and uh, why they are, have the attributes that they do have. And then we'll have a look at our, a quick peek at our brochure uh, for this market about all the sanding and finishing options you can use. Uh, then we're going to have a look at our brand new kits we have available for you. Uh, after that, practical. So you get to see me finish this panel in front of me here uh, or to a really nice uh, polished finish. And then at the end, for those of you who are joined us live and not, not watching on, on YouTube, we will have a live question and answers, uh, answers session. But to be a little bit different uh, this season, we're going to have some free giveaways. Okay, so if you are watching this uh, live stream, you can actually claim a free sample of the products uh, if you follow the instructions on screen here. So you have to join the live stream and watch it to the end of the demonstration to be eligible for this. Uh, we'll publish the link uh, to, to request your sample right at the very end of this stream. Again, as I said, it's only available to live viewers. So those watching the recorded session, it's not going to be possible for you to claim your, your free uh, sample. Uh, you must claim by midnight tonight. So make sure when you come back to the pub, you log on and you claim your free sample. Uh, you must allow four weeks for delivery because I'm sure this will be a very popular uh, uptake on this. So give us some time to get these dispatched. Uh, and don't forget to read the terms and conditions on our website, the link for which will be in the uh, in the chat. OK, those are all the T's, T's and C's out of the way. So we've got through them relatively, relatively easily. OK, so uh, like I said, we're going to introduce you, first of all, to uh, our experts on today. First of all is me. I'm Paul Gray. I live in Cheshire in the centre of, uh, of England. I'm the application engineer for MRO for the whole of, uh, of Europe, EMEA. I've got 30 years in manufacturing experience and 18 years in, uh, in abrasives. And now I'm going to pass you on to my colleague, Morgan Van Penn. Morgan, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing really well. Thank you. Oh, nice to hear you're on. Uh, so uh, would you like to introduce yourself, Morgan? Yes, thanks, Paul. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Morgan Van Penn, and I'm really glad to be with uh, you today on this live stream. So as you can probably hear, I'm French. Uh, I'm uh, based in Paris, not far from Conflans, where our Coty d'Abrasive plant is located. I'm product manager MRO, so for Europe, Middle East, Africa, since uh, two years. Before that, I was a R&D engineer for Coty d'Abrasive during five years. So I have a material and chemistry uh, background, and I've been in Saint-Gobain for seven years. Thank you for that, Morgan. 
Okay, so uh, so now what uh, we said on the agenda, we'll just have a quick look at uh, at the composite market and explain a bit more about what uh, what is uh, what is a composite. So. As we said earlier, composite is a growing market, and uh, it's it's growing for really for a few basic reasons. Is first of all, is the diverse applications where these uh, composite products can be used. You can see here on the screen, transportation, aerospace, trains, marine, uh, even in industry in pipes and tanks, uh, construction, infrastructure. And there's a really easy and simple reason for that. It's because they are very lightweight, strong, durable, and adaptable. I mean, think about uh, transport, for example. We, we are trying to get as efficient as we can with our planes, with our, with our cars, etc. Reducing weight is one of the key, uh, key elements to doing this. And using the composite panels rather than steel panels, conventional steel panels or aluminium that we used to use before, uh, they, they give us a huge advantage of, uh, of weight saving. Uh, so you can see why this is an uh, ever-growing market and will continue uh, continue to do so. We also, as it says here, we can get a really nice finish on a composite, as good as any painted uh, a painted surface, or sometimes better with the gloss of a gel coat coming through. So uh, they are really uh, desirable products to 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 have uh, have around us. Um, lots of different finishes required, but today we'll be concentrating on. Uh, on one certain finish, a, a high polish finish on a polyester polyester rev, resin. So over to you, Morgan, to explain us about what is a composite. Thank you. Thank you. So what is a composite? So let's take a, a little bit of time to, to explain. So first, uh, it's important to know a composite material is produced from two or more materials. So these materials have different uh, chemical, physical, mechanical properties. And so combined together, they create a material with greater advantages. So you can see in the right picture of the slide an example of composite molding process. For simplicity, here we show hand lamination of a GRP, which is glass reinforced uh, plastic, but various other processes exist. So it's a sandwich structure, as you can see, of a gel coat, fiber reinforcement and resin in a mold. So secondly, focusing more on the gel coat. So once all molded, the gel coat is the exterior, so the visible surface of the finished piece. It provides a durable and high quality finish on the surface. So usually, as Paul said, it's really glossy, shiny and colored. You, you can see also in the pictures. Uh, it can also be uh, UV resistant uh, and waterproof, uh, depending on the applications. Lots of different, lots of different applications as well as it says here. But uh, but I, I think the main fact on here is the, the the different types of gel coats we do have. Morgan, isn't it? The, the three different materials. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There are three different main types. So it's uh, it's quite important to know. So we have polyester, vinyl ester, and epoxy. So the polyester the polyester is the softer one, the cheapest. Uh, it's really widely used, and I think it's the yeah it's the most common in the composite market. I think it accounts for around about 80% of the market, uh, we assume, uh, Morgan, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, widely used. After we have vinyl ester, so it's tougher, more resistant to corrosion, uh, high temperatures. And finally, epoxy, so it's harder, more durable, but also really more expensive, so it's less popular. And so, of, of course, depending on the gel, gel coat uh, type you want to grow, the uh, different grading steps. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For example, as, as Morgan says, the, the polyester is much softer, so it's a simpler finishing process. But when we go to epoxy, it's a much longer, more involved, many more steps to get the get the right finish on that due to the material being much, much harder than, uh, than polyester. OK. So, yeah, so we just talked about uh, grinding steps. So you can see uh, I, ca I can introduce you now to our new uh, sanding and finishing composite brochure. So in this brochure, you can find a step-by-step, -step, very simple process to follow. So it's really easy and visual, and uh, it will guide you through your grinding and polishing uh, processes. So the steps are detailed for the three main resins uh, we just mentioned with Paul, so polyester, vinyl, and epoxy. And for instance, here you can see an example of uh, polyester. So you have step one, two, three, and four. So two sanding steps with P400 and P800 sanding discs, and two polishing steps with Farikla liquid compounds. And this, this is this is what we're going to go through today as well, Morgan. We're going to keep it to the, the polyester. So we'll show you this uh, this full process uh, a bit later on in the in the, in the practical. 
And just before I forget, um, we're just going to post uh, the link to this brochure on the chat as well. So uh, those of you who have joined us live can uh, have a little click on there and download the brochure to your to your laptop or PC or whatever. Thanks, Morgan. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah no problem. <laughs> uh, so yeah, additionally, also in the brochure, uh, with, uh, additionally to the grindy steps, you will also find great tips, uh, recommendations, uh, Paul, uh, Paul uh, and marketing team uh, um, provide together. So you, you will have uh, which machine to use, at what speed, with which pads, how to polish efficiently and so on. So make sure you can uh, get your brochure for having uh, the first class results. <laughs> First class every time, Morgan. Okay. So, in addition to the brochure now available, we have two new uh, composite kits uh, with best selection of abrasive and Farikla products. So, the starter kit, uh, as you can see in the slide, is our basic kit. It will allow you to get a quick finish on a small surface. It contains um, Norton Sand Index and two sample tubes of Farikla products. So, if you stay until the really end of the live stream and I recommend uh, you, you can request your free sample of, of this uh, starter kit. And after the professional kit, so it's it's a more complete kit uh, with higher number of sanding discs. You can find on it uh, wool pads, backing plates and two bottles of uh, one liter of Farikla compound. And it's this kit uh, Paul will unbox you and uh, we, that Paul will use in uh, today's demonstration. So over to you, Paul, to show us that. Thank you, Morgan. Okay. Right. So uh, enough of the PowerPoint, I think. Uh, so now we have uh, we have a, a little look at the kits uh, Morgan was just showing you about. This is the the basic kit she showed you. So it comes in a nice little Norton box here. Two tubes of uh, of the Freckler uh, finishing compounds that we have here as well, and a range of of, uh, of sanding discs. So P400, P600, and P800 in our. A293 product, which, as we showed you earlier, is all you need to get a, a good finish on uh, on your composite panel. So here for your sanding, all the way from four to to 800, and then here starting with the cut uh, cut compound, the uh, 200 select coarse cut uh, for your uh, scratch removal, any swirl removal, and then onto the 700 finish to take out the, any remaining swirls and polish and uh, and any uh, any holograms that are remaining. So that's the the basic kit. So that's the one that's up for for grabs as your as your sample. So again, please uh, please uh, try and get yourself one of uh, one of those. But then we also have the um, the much more comprehensive uh, pro kit here, which uh, has everything uh, the, more or less the same content as that, but a bit more enhanced uh, for for professional sanders. So we have again one box of each of the sanding disc. So the P four hundred the P600 and the P800. Uh, we have a backing pad in a medium grade for your random orbit sander. Uh, we have the compounds in one litre bottle. So the 200 uh, coarse cut and the uh, 700 uh, polish from Ferrecla there. And we also have a whole plethora of mops as well. So we have the backing plate for your machine here, uh, which is really handy to have. We have the twist knot uh, pad for the for you to use with the cutting compound here as well, and then finally we have the lambswool pad for your for your polishing. So a really comprehensive uh, kit. All you need to do is have the machine. It's uh, dead simple. Everything else is here uh, for you with the with the pro kit. Okay, so uh, I think it's time to uh, to start the practical side of this and show you how we're going to finish uh, this panel using the process we showed you. Uh, earlier on, the sanding and polishing. So uh, if we could just quickly bring up that slide again, Martin. Uh, by the way, when I refer to Martin, Martin is our guy who's uh, uh, controlling everything that's going out on the live stream today. He's the producer. So when I refer to him, it's, it's not a strange name I've made up for somebody. It is actually my colleague that's working with me here today. So thank you, Martin. So yes, the slide here shows the, the full, uh, full uh, process that we're going to show you today. So it shows you two sanding steps. Uh, so start with P400 uh, and then uh, on to P800. But if you note in the comments below uh, on the step one, it said a P600 is optional. OK, the reason we say an optional step like that is because it depends on the amount of damage that your gel coat has or how old uh, the gel coat is. If it's older uh, or damaged more, you will need to incorporate the 600 uh, step just to refine that finish uh, uh, a little bit better. 
but if you uh, have a fresh panel you can jump straight from 400 to 800 and skip that step so uh, and then the polishing steps will go through a little bit uh, a little bit later okay thanks for that martin so uh, as this is uh, quite an old panel i think it's a couple of years old to be honest with you so it uh, it will be quite hard because uh, these uh, these resins do get harder as they uh, as they age so i am going to incorporate the p600 uh, step to get to today Right, so on with our sanding. So first of all, I'm going to start with our P400 uh, grade in the A293. If we just have a close up of this disc here. So as you see on the back here, you can see A293, the product it is. It's P400 grade. Our logo was made in, uh, made in Europe and uh, no fill. OK, that's quite an important uh, uh, word on this product because on the abrasive surface here, we have what we call a stearate layer. Uh, which stops uh, the dust we produce when we when we sand something like this uh, uh, polyester resin uh, panel. It stops the dust clogging uh, to this disc, so therefore uh, prolongs the life of uh, of the discs. You notice we have lots of holes in here as well, uh, so we make sure the whole configuration matches uh, the backing pad that we're using today as well uh, to get maximum dust extraction. So the more dust you remove from the surface when you're sanding, the better, because dust is your enemy. It kills the disc quicker, but it also uh, affects the finish. If you don't take the dust away from the sanding area, you end up creating more damage with things like pigtails, so swirls where uh, the disc has moved around and, and the dust is being ground into, into the actual surface. So uh, really important to have uh, extraction, disc with holes and the no fill uh, layer on, on your product. A uh, quick talk about the machine we're using today. We're using our Norton uh, Random Orbit Sander. Um, the, there are different machines available in the market. There's a 2.5 millimeter and a 5 millimeter orbit. So that's the eccentricity that you have uh, on these products when you use it. And this one here is a 2.5 uh, because I want to try and get as good a finish as possible. If you're doing more aggressive work, then you'll be using a 5mm orbit. It gets the job done much quicker. But today, I'm going to try and be as gentle as I can with this panel. So therefore, I'm using a 2.5mm uh, orbit, uh, orbit machine. Right, so we'll just get the, uh, the disc on, on, the, on the pad there. Okay, so that's ready to go. Now, let's have just a quick look at the composite panel, if we can, before I clamp it to the surface. So you can see on here um, you can see there's quite a bit of i don't know whether we can get it on the camera it's quite difficult but you can see there's a bit of damage on here you can see the scratches on here there's some pinholes as well so this is exactly what we want to move if i try and polish before sanding these all these marks will still be uh, still be on uh, on the composite panel so this is the reason why we have to go through this sanding and finishing uh, finishing process so well, i've taped off the middle section so this is where we'll concentrate and then we'll leave the outer section so we can compare and contrast what the finish looks like here uh, versus the outer sections when we've uh, when, when we've finished right let's get this uh, clamped to the uh, the desk everything goes okay so far morgan yes i'm happy to hear that Right, we're clamped to the desk. Um, uh, very important to make sure you've got the right uh, PPE uh, with you today. So we are dealing with a dusty product. It is glass fiber, remember, as well. So always good to uh, wear, even though we have dust extraction in, in the inside today, always good to have your, your face mask on just to ensure you're not breathing in any, uh, any debris. So let's get this on. I'm also wearing nitrile gloves to keep my hands nice and clean. And I will put my glasses on just... Uh, just in case as well. I have to put them on a little bit down, otherwise they'll steam up. Right, so first of all, I'm going to sand. And while I'm sanding, Morgan, I'll explain a little bit of uh, what kind of process I'm using, uh, why I'm using the disc in different directions on the, on the surface. So off I go. Over to you, Morgan. Thanks, Paul. So as you can see, Paul is following like a, a pattern. So it's a, it's a sandy pass that uh, is recommended for having uh, really homogeneous results uh, to get the best finish. So you can find this pass uh, in detail in, the, in our brochure as well, if you want to follow.
So he's doing it uh, three or four times. It's really up to you, depending on the on how uh, the panel is age. Uh, if there is a lot of damage or not. Okay. So we've taken off uh, uh, a nice bit of the damage with the uh, P400. So that's the most aggressive disc we're going to be using today. So that's where we're going to do most of the work. Now, before I go on to the next step uh, of the P600, it's always a good idea to, to clean your, your area with, uh, with a, a, a rag such as this, uh, just to remove any dust on the, on the surface. You can already see uh, the scratches have gone now, but we've got a nice sort of opaque uh, finish on here. So we'll try and refine that now with, uh, with the next grade, which is a, a P600 uh, A293 disc. Okay, so take off the old 800. And you can see the dust, the, the dust is not stuck to that disc at all. We still have plenty, uh, plenty of life on there. All right, P600. Get that on the disc. Okay, let's go. Good. So, as Paul said, it's really important uh, to have this uh, sterate uh, white layer on our product because uh, in combination uh, of dust extraction, it really avoids to have uh, a lot of dust because the sterate layer, we, it's, a, it's a product that will help uh, really uh, against dust and also then it will increase the life of uh, your abrasive surface. And to clean the surface also to remove the dust, it's really important, of course, you, you don't want to grind the previous dust and uh, of course it will uh, prevent defects such as big tails, small holes, etc. So here, following also the same sanding path as before, with just 600 grit. Okay, so that's the 600 step uh, finished. And now we'll move to the final sanding step, which is our P, uh, P800. Okay. Again, we'll just give it a quick, uh, a quick wipe down, get rid of all the uh, dust and debris to reduce the chance of any uh, pigtailing. All right. You see that's looking a lot, uh, a lot finer now, getting ever refined. Right, last step with sanding. Sorry, my vacuum hose has just fell off uh, the back of the machine, which is not ideal, so I'll put that back on. All right. So it's the last uh, sanding, uh, sanding process with the P800 uh, disc. Again, following the same uh, sanding path. before switching to the steps that we call uh, polishing. Okay, so that's uh, finished with the, uh, the sanding steps, so I can uh, take off my mask, easier said than done. And uh, now we can have a look at moving on to our second stage, which is our compounding and, uh, and polishing. Okay, so before we do this, I want to show you a, a nice little product we have from our brothers over here at, uh, at One Bond, part of the Sangaban group. Uh, this is our XP250. Uh, which is uh, actually essentially a tack cloth. All right, I, I could use uh, a conventional uh, cloth like this to remove um, 
the dust, but as you see, it's full of dust already, and the dust on that cloth will get back to the surface. So what I want to use is this, uh, what we call a tack cloth. Uh, so any dust that I take off with the tack cloth will stick to this pad and will not end up back on the, on the surface. So you see that straight away. We see a really good uh, uh, image of my, uh, my handprint, and that dust will stick to, uh, stick to this cloth and will not remain on the surface of, uh, of this panel. So we'll give it a good clean all over so we don't uh, get any dust left on there because like I said before, dust is your, is your enemy here. It's going to give you a poor, uh, poor finish. Again, you can see straight away, all of it stuck to that, uh, that cloth. So really nice cloth to use. It does not shed the dust back onto the surface even when you shake it like that. So uh, really handy bit of, uh, bit of item to have. So if you're doing large panels, before you start polishing, always use a tack cloth uh, like that as your final step before we, uh, we start polishing and compounding. Right, so onto that, we have our nice uh, Freckler polishing machine here, as you can see, already got the pad attached to it. Uh, so uh, we start with stage one, which as I said, is our uh, cutting stage. For that, I'm going to use, um, if we just keep on that angle, if you can, Martin, that would be great. I'm going to use, again, the Freckler uh, Profile 200 Select. Now, this is the coarse cut li liquid compound, and there's been a bit of a change in Freckler with the profile range. Now we're using numbers to signify what kind of cut level this actually gives. So the lower the number, uh, the more cut rate, uh, the higher number, the more polish you, you get from, uh, from that. So uh, as you can see here, 200 coarse cut. Okay, so that makes perfect uh, perfect sense on it. He even got a recommended what kind of uh, abrasives you should use and what kind of wall pad you should use on here. So it's full of uh, some nice information uh, on this bottle. So there's all on the back of uh, uh, what your sanding process should be to get to the, the finish you, you want and you know what kind of pad you should be using, speeds, etc. So useful bit of kit on the, on the bottle there. Uh, so as I'm trying to coarse cut, I'm going to be using uh, a twist, twisted wool pad such as this item here. Again, uh, coarser fibers on here because I want to do some work. I'm actually trying to remove some material. So we want a pad with a bit of body in it, which is what you get here with the, uh, the twisted uh, wool pad. Some people use foams. Uh, I prefer to stick with a traditional uh, uh, woolen pad like this. Really simple to put onto the, the backing plate. We just offer it up there and give it a squeeze down and maybe have a push, push down with the machine there to make sure it's firmly attached with the, uh, uh, the Velcro. Um, good tip for you, if uh, this is not a new pad like we have here today, is we can do something called uh, spurring. So if it's an old pad, and the pad is full of uh, old uh, compound which has gone hard, not a good idea to use that on your panel, because you, again you'll just import scratches straight into there, which you'll have to work for hours afterwards to take them out. So a good thing to do is what we call spurring. Now this is what we call a spurring brush. So what I want to do is offer this, uh, offer this brush into the pad whilst it's spinning at low speed just to open up the fibres again and take out any of the hard spots from, from old compounds. So we don't need to do that today with a, with a new pad, but I'll just show you very quickly how you would do it if, you, uh, if you're using an old, old one. So again, we get the machine going like this and we simply put the brush across the surface just to open it up. You can see a bit of debris flying off there. So be careful where you do that. Don't do it next to your colleague who might be a little bit upset with you. But uh, just nicely opening up the, uh, up the fibers there. So simple. So that's how to spur your, uh, your pad before you start. And you can see we actually remove quite a bit of, uh, bit of the pad by doing that. But uh, yeah, it keeps your pad going for longer, to be honest. Uh, right, let's get some compound on here. And one of the nice things about, uh, about uh, Ferrecla and, uh, and the way their compound works is you don't have to use as much compound as you would with uh, competitive suppliers. Uh, we reckon about half the amount is, is normal. But as this is a new pad, we need to get some compound in it uh, to get it working uh, efficiently. So we'll start off with some reasonable amount in a few places here. And, uh, and we shall start to apply that to the surface. Now, when we first start off, I always recommend when you've got fresh compound on there like that to start off slowly. Otherwise you'll end up wearing most of it and it'll be up the walls, up everything in the, in the surrounding area. So try and start off uh, nice and slow and then we'll build up the speed. Remember we're cutting here. So 
speed medium to fast uh, on, on this uh, twist wall with this kind of cut compound. That'll get the job done nice, uh, nice and quickly. So start slow and we'll build the speed up uh, towards, uh, towards the end. Okay, right, off we go. What is really nice with the product is that you don't need to apply too much pressure on it. You can see already that the finish is a uh yeah, you can see already the finish is getting a lot better. Yeah, when I when I wipe over it now with the with the cloth, you'll you'll see it when I take off the remaining compound on here. Um, just a note, you can see it's doing some work, by the way, guys. Because look at the pad. Remember, this was a fresh pad, and we've imparted some of the uh, the coloured gel coat on here. So we are cutting with this product. We're not just uh, not just polishing. Sorry, Morgan. You say you were saying something. I cut you off. I do apologise. I'm not sure uh, the people could hear, but I was saying that you don't need to apply too much pressure on it, which is quite nice also for... Uh... Ah, ah, that's a really, yeah, it's a really good point. And remember, you know, uh, people using these kind of products, they're using them uh, not always in a nice, easy uh, application like I am stood above it. They're sometimes holding this against the side of a boat or a side of a large composite structure trying to polish. So. You don't need pressure with these items. Let the compound and the mop and the machine do the work so you don't need to push and, and tie yourself out too quickly. That's a really good uh, good point, Morgan. Okay, so, yes, it was, so it's, I said to medium to fast, but a handy thing on this tool, we've got a speed chart. So I started at one, uh, which is about 700 uh, RPM, just to get the compound in and not throw it all over the, the place. I then moved it up to three, which is uh, on here is about 1500. And then I went to about five at the end, just to give it a bit more aggressivity, which is 2200 RPM. So medium fast is, is perfectly good enough for, uh, for this product where we're trying to do some work. Okay, uh, so ne next we're gonna move on to the, um, the polishing step. So let me just take off the uh, twisted wool. Always try and put that somewhere safe, back in the bag if you can. Uh, so we don't get contamination on there from uh, from other products around the area and then we can bring out our our lamb's wool uh, nice and soft uh, soft pad as you see here see it's much more flexible so have a quick zoom in on that please martin if we can so you can see a much finer uh finer feel to this it's really really soft uh, really flexible uh, so this is our what we call our polishing uh, pad we're going to be used to today so this is our uh, lamb's wool. Uh, we're going to be using that with our uh, Ferrecla 700 uh, finish product, which is light cut, polish and swirl remover. So that's really important. When we're using products like this on composites, we can, because of the rotary action, get swirls and marks on here and also some holograms. Uh, but this uh, this product is really good at removing all of those uh, issues that we've got uh, in front of us right here. Again, Nice numbering system. Uh, we started at 200 with the cut. Now we're jumping straight to 700 for the polish because again, this is polyester. We don't have to have too many steps to get a good finish uh, finish on here. 
all the information on the back of the bottle again about the processes where you what you should have done before what pad you should be using uh, speeds etc on the back of the bottle to keep it nice and uh, nice and simple for you to to, to follow what we're supposed to be uh, doing here today all right so let's get the pad on the machine and again all velcro based so uh, nothing too uh, too much of an issue there and we'll get some compound onto the pad again I've shown you spurring already. We don't need to do it on this one. It's a new pad, so we can save a bit of time on there and get some compound on here. Okay, that should be enough. Again, not too much required. And uh, before I start that off, I'm just going to rub that into the panel a little bit so we don't wear it. That's quite a bit of compound. Actually, I might have put a bit too much on. So I'll start the machine nice and slow this time uh, on one. All right, off we go to polish. So this is the last step of the polishing. As Paul said, uh, we are using now a lance wool uh, pad, which is much softer compared to the twisted wool, uh, which is for more aggressive cut. It's important to, to say that Paracla polishers have uh, great advantages compared to some others because they are 0% uh, VOC. But also really important is that they don't contain any fillers. So it's really important to get a permanent finish with no uh, reappearance of the defects. Because sometimes you have ch cheaper products with fillers, but uh, I mean, fillers, uh, they are a quick way to give temporary, uh, temporary illusion of a polish finish. But when the fillers goes away, uh, you have uh, the original defects uh, coming back from the surface. So. This won't happen using the Firecla product. Okay, so uh, I think we are done. As you can see on the on the surface there, we're still doing even a little bit of a little bit of cut with that because we have some uh, some color of the uh, the gel cut on there, but. We, we are, are finished, so relatively quickly uh, for, for this panel size. Let's just take off uh, the remaining of the uh, excess stuff. I did put a little bit too much on there, to be honest with you guys. So it'll take me a little bit of while of removing that. And I'll also remove, remove the sides because we want to compare and contrast that as well. Okay, it's not looking bad at all. Right, looking at the surface in the in the lights, I can't see any pigtailing or holograms. Looks like a really nice uh, nice finish we've managed to get on there, as well as this being relatively uh, hard uh, hard uh, polyester gel coat. Okay, I think we're as good as done. I could try and show you uh, uh, what this looks like now if I take the clamps off. Okay, let's have a look at that into the uh, into the camera. I think yeah, you can see. Uh, I'm just trying to get a bit of light refract refracting in here. Yeah, look at the difference. Okay, of the side with uh, with some real damage on there, and then the, the middle part here. You can see the uh, the reflection of the light there. It's much sharper, much a sharper image, and that's what we want. We want the light to reflect refract from this panel, and that's what's going to make it look uh, look nice when it's in. Uh, when it's in service. Okay, so uh, we showed you a full process uh, here today. So we showed you from sanding, from P400, 600, the optional step uh, for hard materials like this, uh, 800, so the full sanding process uh, on a 2.5 mil random orbit sander. Uh, easy to take out all of the damage that you had in here, the scratches, the pinholes, etc. Then we moved on to the polishing with the lamb's wool, the 200 profile coarse cut, and then, uh, so, sorry, the, the twisted knot wool uh, pad with the 200 cut, and then the lamb's wool, we moved on with the 700 uh, polishing. So five products gives you a really nice uh, nice finish on your on your polyester glass reinforced uh, plastic, uh, plastic product. So easy process. Okay. Um, right, now at the start of the stream, uh, we talked about uh, the free samples we were offering uh, to you guys. Uh, for those that are watching us uh, live today so 
If you, those of you who are watching on YouTube, I did forget about that. Uh, obviously, you cannot claim your free prize because you're watching after and not live. But um, uh, thank you for joining us on, on, on YouTube. Check out the videos on the rest of the channel. We'll see you next time. Okay, thank you.